Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and in today's video I'd like to show you how I built these DIY floating shelves completely out of 3 quarter inch plywood on modern builds. Today's video is made possible by Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com slash modern builds for your free trial and to build your own custom website. To build these floating shelves, I'm gonna be using the Craig ACS, which stands for Adaptive Cutting System, who's a sponsor of today's video. I'll be using the Craig Track Saw and Project Table to cut and assemble all of my pieces, and I'll be sharing my thoughts on this setup throughout the video. These shelves are gonna be incorporating a whole lot of 45 degree bevel cuts, and that's something that I haven't done on the ACS much. So I'm interested to see in how it performs on a project like this. Let's get started. Whenever I'm breaking down plywood, I like to use a piece of polystyrene insulation as a cutting mat. That way the blade can go through the wood, but not hit the concrete floor underneath. And with my track saw set to cut 45 degrees, I could break down my pieces for my 9 inch deep shelves. What you see me doing here is flipping the orientation of my track every other cut. That way I'm able to create a seamless miter joint where the grain wraps around the board. Getting rid of this triangular off cut is going to allow the boards to fold together and look really cool. After that, I flipped my track around and I cut the piece that is going to be the face of the shelves, and that's three inches tall. And after that, it was just rinse and repeat. I needed to get that off cut out of the way one more time so that I could then cut my third nine inch deep piece for the bottom of the shelf. And in this shot, you can see how the grain flows through each of those pieces and is actually gonna wrap around the edges of the shelves for a really unique look. And really, it wasn't that complicated. It was just a couple of extra cuts to get these triangular voids between each of my pieces. My next step was to make marks for the cross cuts in all of my pieces. The two ends of the shelves are gonna come out of this thin middle piece and I need to make sure and cut off nine inches from the top and the bottom of the shelf. That way the grain continues to wrap, which is what I'm trying to do with this whole project. And doing cross cuts on the Craig ACS really is simple. You just lower your track into position and then run the saw just like you would any other time for a really clean, precise cut. And to help account for any human error, I actually used the first piece that I cut on each of these shelves to mark out all of my second pieces that need to be the exact same size. That way I was sure they would be symmetrical. With all my plywood broken down, it was time to start assembling and gluing up my shelves, and I used the old painter's tape clamping trick to hold everything in place while the glue dried. Well, I ran out of painter's tape and started using gaffer's tape, but you guys get the point. The whole idea is you lay down painter's tape on the face of whatever boards you're making, then you can lay down glue anywhere that you have joining faces. From there, you can tape everything up in place while it dries. Wood glue is crazy strong and there's no need for any mechanical fasteners. If it holds together after this, it's gonna stay together forever. I won't lie though, the two shorter shelves were way easier to glue up than that long five or six foot shelf that I made. Still the same steps though. I just laid down my tape in place, cut anywhere that that tape would get trapped in between any of my joints, added glue, and held it all together. And now's a good time to mention, if you plan on building this project or something similar, I'm gonna have free PDF plans on my website linked down in the description. It'll have a simple cut list and some diagrams, that way you're sure to know everything you need to before you get started. I've also got product links for all the tools and supplies that I used in this project in the video description also. All right, so real quick, I just wanna pop in and give a tip that I should have taken from the start. Whenever I set my track saw to 45 degrees, I should have lifted this little lever that allows it to actually move to 47 degrees. Doing this is actually gonna overcut each of those bevels by a couple of degrees. That way, all of the outside corners are super tight. If there's a little bit of a gap on the inside of these miters, it's no big deal because they'll never show. 
No biggie though, anywhere that I did have some small voids, I used DAP, wood filler, and natural finish, and that dries to a really good color that blends in with plywood, especially birch and maple plywood. Then, I grabbed some 80 grit Gorilla sandpaper, and I did a really light sanding on all of my faces to get the majority of that filler out of the way. Then, I sanded with 120 and 180 grit sandpaper to get it ready for finish. I did my best to have a light touch here, but there were a couple spots that I accidentally sanded through the veneer. It wasn't anything detrimental, but it is something to be cautious of on any plywood project. For those who don't know already, Simple Finish is by my company, Maker Brand, and we've created a one-step solution for finishing all of your plywood and hardwood projects. All you have to do is apply a couple of heavy coats and allow the oil to penetrate for about 15 minutes and then wipe off the excess. You'll be left with a natural wood finish with a wax sealer that's durable enough for any of your furniture projects. Really quickly, I'd like to give a huge thanks to this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the number one shop for you to build your own website. And the best part is you need zero website building experience. Squarespace has a library of built-in designer templates that look incredible right out of the gate. All you need to be able to do is drag and drop files and edit text blocks and you're on your way to a one of a kind website. Squarespace sites look amazing on desktop, tablet, and mobile devices. That way you're sure to stand out no matter where visitors find you. And setting up an online store could not be easier with Squarespace. With a Squarespace store, you can accept payments online and have unlimited products. That's right, there is no limit to the number of products you can sell on Squarespace. So to learn more, make sure and follow the link down in the description, that's squarespace.com forward slash modern builds to start your free trial. Squarespace is so confident in their service, you can actually build your own test site before entering any of your credit card info. Then whenever you're ready to launch your first First site, make sure and check out using the code Modern Builds for 10% off your first site. Thanks, Squarespace. So now that the outside of these floating shelves are complete, I started breaking down the plywood to create the internal structure or the brackets that I'm using to hold these into the wall. And I just got one of the leftover pieces of plywood and cut it into inch and a half strips. Cross-cutting these short pieces on the ACS were really fun because I didn't even have to move the saw. All I did was plunge it into the wood and that was enough to cut my pieces to length. And you can see here how all of the brackets are going to assemble so that they're really strong. I've got two layers of plywood on each end with perpendicular supports every 8 or 9 inches. Now I'm just gonna let this time lapse run and you can see how everything comes together, but it's really, really simple. I just used wood glue and brad nails to hold everything together while that glue dried. And just like earlier on in the video, once I had the frame for the big shelf, the two shorter shelves were a walk in the park. I got lucky installing my brackets because I had already installed some peel and stick hexagonal wallpaper that gave me a ton of reference points to make sure that everything was going in straight, or at least visually. So I was able to just mark a line where I knew I wanted my shelf to be, use a stud finder to find the 2x4s behind the drywall, and anchor in my brackets into those 2x4 studs. And you can see here where I drilled through the front of the brackets, that way I would have an access point to be able to screw straight into the 2x4 studs behind the wall. Now I really don't think these floating shelves are gonna be carrying that much weight, but I always lean towards adding more screws than not having enough. So you can see that I tied into quite a few of the two by fours behind the wall. And this bracket was really, really sturdy. And after that, you can see how I could install the rest of the floating shelves basically as slip covers over these brackets. I made sure that the frame on the inside of the shelves had about an inch of wiggle room to the left and to the right. That way these shelves had plenty of adjustability to be able to line everything up the way I wanted to. And once I had everything symmetrical, this project was done. Booyah. Yeah. 
as always, I'm really happy with how this project came out. It was a really good skill builder. If you've been following along with my recent builds, then you know that I've been doing a lot of continuous grain projects, and this one was definitely the most continuous grain that I had done on any one piece. And even though all of my seams weren't perfect, it was still really cool to see how the grain wrapped around all of these pieces, even on the ends. So big shout out to Craig and the adaptive cutting system. So thanks a ton for watching today's video. If you want to see the rest of this mini kitchen or the full attic to home theater renovation, you can click those videos right here. And don't forget, always subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you can stay up to date with all of my posts. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Modern Builds. Thank you.